seen the stock market plunging today. We've seen gold shooting back up. Uh, oh, and I forgot, Zero Hedge is reporting that the federal government uh, and, uh, what is it, Goldman Sachs uh, people are saying, hey, we can... We, we can have the government come in and reduce gold price. So this is a pretty stunning statement. If you weren't aware of that, uh, I can dig it out and, and then uh, read it to you and, and uh, get your take. But, but Bob, good to have you here with us. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I wouldn't expect anything else in normally from Goldman Sachs or Citigroup or HSBC or JPM. Uh, although uh, a week ago, JPM said gold by the end of the year is going to $2,500 an ounce. And I think they said that because they thought it was going higher than that. And they hoped that their statement would keep it from going higher than that. Uh, these people are desperate. Well, Goldman Sachs comes out and says, well, you know, the government could sell gold. Well, the question is, where are they going to find it? Aren't they in trouble I mean, on silver as well? Uh, I mean, how much real silver is there discovered and uh, uh, versus how much they're short on it. Well, the U.S. government's been out of silver for 10 years. So they don't have any. I mean, that is an admitted fact. So they would have to go and have somebody lend it to them, or they would have to buy it. And if they bought it, they would make the price go up. Uh, so it, it's nothing but unfounded propaganda. And if it was going to affect the market, well, gee, the market's been all over the place today. I think it ended up five points. It's been flipping between 260 and 560 for the past 10 or 15 minutes on the plus side. And so there's plenty of action. They met their masters uh, during this uh, day. Uh, they tried to take it down. They couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. There's too many physical buyers in there. And uh, as I said last week, uh, uh, we uh, touched 1,800. Uh, we're going to go back up to 1,900 again. And probably take a week or so and test that into day 1928. And they'll break it. How long will it take? I don't know, a week or two, three, four, five, six. And then we get 2,000, 2,200. Then what are they going to do then? Come out and say, well, we're going to take uh, all of the gold out of everybody's fillings and we're going to sell it into the market. I mean, that's how stupid it is. Well, they keep, as you know, what two times in the last few months raised the uh, margin, you know, how much money you have to put down to be in there manipulating it. And, and, and that's barely put the brakes on only for a short period, then it raises back up. But Zero Hedge, great inside sources. This is up at Infowars.com. But in this case, they're just linking directly to their insiders that uh, leak them. Well, Goldman Sachs last week was saying internally to their big investors, we believe a total implosion is coming. Go ahead and sucker the public like they did with Timberwolf. You know, these people are scum. We're going to get them. You know, hey, did you feel the earthquake? Yeah, it was my wallet hitting the ground. Ha, ha, ha. But uh, here's the headline. Goldman Sachs head gold trader. Authorities could intervene to slam down price of gold. Former Goldman, uh, not former, from Goldman's head gold trader, Zach Dabalia, uh, and it goes through the quotes to say the source of this flow seems hard to pin down with some speculating over whether authorities were concerned with the signals of an accelerating gold price and its impact on other fragile markets are exposing their paper markets. Uh, however, official sector activity with the PWM is already using this latest dip to reaccumulate. And it may be the case that the market is already close to clean positions at even higher prices. Despite the much higher volume, we are happy to own short date 1-2 uh, MTH high stakes, more than flat price positions in the current environment. And then it goes on to talk about the government stepping in to try to try to suppress it. Uh, what does all this coded babble uh, mean? Nothing. It is babble. And they don't have any gold. And if they do, they're not going to use it to try to manipulate the market. They're just not going to do it. And so, you know, it's a big secret. No audits since 1954. So we don't know what they've got. Are they going to do, borrow it from Germany? Or did they already sell that off? We never heard whether they gave German, Germany delivery. That was almost two years ago. Yeah, and, 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 so and, and what about Chavez it's, demanding it's, his 144 tons out of England? What's that? What about Chavez demanding his gold from England? Well, I, I, I thought that was a good idea by... Uh, 
Mr. Chavez, and uh, hopefully he'll get delivery. It'll be interesting to see if he does, because if he doesn't, that means they don't have the gold to deliver, and they'll have to go find it someplace. Either that, they'll try to play him in dollars, and he's going to say, I don't want dollars. I want my gold. Now go get it. And it is the dictator's gold. I guess the dictator wants it from the, uh, I think say he's been elected, but he's chicaned that uh, position. You know, Chavez beating the free trade area, the Americans and stuff, that was a that was an example of a blind hog finding acorns. But overall, he is more and more cracking down. And I've talked to folks that are in Venezuela. They say that his communism is just destroying the country. So it's an example of the bankers are rotten and horrible, and Chavez is rotten. But I guess in a way, you know, he's less rotten because he's not putting cancer viruses in our vaccines like uh, the globalists are. Uh, what do you think of the whole Muammar Gaddafi situation? They keep saying they're going to kill him, they're going to kill him, they're going to kill him. But now they admit, notice Libya's left, left the front pages, and they admit now the rebels don't have a bunch of the cities. And it's just a horrible civil war, 30 plus thousand dead. Quite a humanitarian intervention, Bob. Yeah, another one. Uh, you know, they keep on bettering themselves all the time in their effort to relieve the people uh, from the earth or the useless eaters, as they call them. I noticed uh, nothing has been said about the gold. Uh, we were told the other day that uh, in the process of the last six months that uh, Mr. Gaddafi had sold 12 tons of gold. Well, he had a lot more than that. Uh, the question is, where is it? We don't know. We haven't been told. Did he take it to Algeria with him? Is he really in Algeria? Well, undoubtedly, he wouldn't be able to transport all that, so I'm sure the rebels have gotten large caches of it, and we'll never hear where that went any, uh, either into, into some politicians' hands, undoubtedly. This is just a rape and repine uh, going on at an expanded level. Uh, Bob, I wanted to bring up another issue. This is old news for us, but... You know, we've always known that the euro was meant to take over countries, get them into debt through fraud, take over the ministers, implode them into a greater, more dictatorial union. But they're going right to the end game and saying it's a financial union run by banks, no more power for the countries, fully conquered. The country's being conquered by the Ponzi scheme operators that, 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 that induce their leaders to sign on to their debt. So, I mean, this is, this is wild. You pay off the leaders to sign on to your debt, and then you become the dictatorial rulers and take everybody's pension funds for yourself. Uh, this is just incredible, and, and raise all these new VAT taxes. And now they're just all over the talking point. Yes, there's going to be a new financial order, and uh, it, 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 it's going to kind of merge with the new American order. I mean, they're going right to this banking authority, uh, not with a bang, but with a whimper, Bob. Where do you They're see going that? for everything, and it's brazen and arrogant. They don't care what you think. Uh, they're telling you we're going to steal everything you've got. And uh, I think the German people may stop them. It'll be interesting to see if they can get this legislation passed to continue to fund the bailout for these countries that are insolvent or close to being so. And if that passes, I would think that there would be some pretty nasty things going on in Germany, like demonstrations and riots. And and uh, I wouldn't be surprised that they didn't try to assassinate some of the members of the Bundestag, uh, which would have uh, okayed this legislation. It's a pretty hot topic there. Yeah, stop and, right uh, there. Stop right there. I want to come back to break and get you to elaborate on this because it's so central. Uh, when I was... Uh, when I was... Well, I'll, I'll tell the story when we come back. It's just when I was driving home Tuesday night, I shot a video about it. I listened to five different speakers on Bloomberg all say the same thing. And they actually said, I'll tell you what they said when we come back. We're Bob back with Bob Chapman. I want to get into all the 9-11 fear-mongering with Bob. Bob, they have now run at least 10 TV ads, and we're seeing them now air um, on the different television sets we've got here around the office. We've recorded some. Got a new report coming out later by Paul Watson on it. They've now got at least 10 ads. Well, some of them aren't even ads. They're like little mini TV shows, 10, 15 minutes long, depending on which one. But some are only about 30 seconds long, a minute long, where you'll have 50 terrorists in one 15-minute show and one person's not, not white who's a terrorist. All the people reporting the terrorist 
uh, are, are, quote, minorities. And then now I've seen a whole bunch of other ads where all the terrorists are white and everyone reporting them is, is a minority. This is 100% naked in our face to completely rebrand, okay, the brown people are the terrorist. That was the earlier branding. But we're going to not not profile, we're going to stick our hands down everybody's pants to know it's now the Tea Partiers. And you've got the vice president, all these others saying the Tea Partiers are terrorists, are going to kill us. So uh, I see a prime mover. Like I need to get Kurt Nemo or somebody to do a story on this. This this came out three days ago, four days ago. Uh, this came actually on 9-6. It's 9-9 right now. That on uh, Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day, uh, Monday, the, the, the police tried to smuggle huge kegs of uh, plastic explosives through Terminal 4. And then once they got through, of course, they're supposed to use inert explosives and drills in test. Then it was, quote, stolen. I mean, uh, number one, they don't use real explosives and drills. Number two, what's the chances of the explosives being stolen? This just means somebody got wise that it wasn't a drill. They were trying to get it on the aircraft. This is the standard way to do it. They pick a name on the plane that sounds like they can sell it. They plant something on the Patsy's computer after they raid their house or even beforehand, you know, after they've died in the suicide bomb or after they've got them in custody. Uh, and they blow an aircraft up. And I think this Phoenix police admit mistake and stolen explosives case is that, uh, and, and, and they could have been a tea party or you name it, but this article uh, is big. Here it is. Explosives stolen from Phoenix airport have been found, police say. Police recovered a potentially dangerous container of explosives stolen during a training exercise at Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix. Authorities, not servants, said the missing uh, cooler was found Monday morning when a motorist in Phoenix spotted the container on the side of the road and alerted police. A bomb squad with the Phoenix Police Department, oh, the same folks that did it with the feds, <laughs> called the folks that did it, was called to the scene and determined that the items inside the container had not been tampered with. Uh, and it goes on to say, and, and, and there's images of the bombs in another article, uh, plastic explosives, I mean, uh, Bob, hey, why would they be trying to ship real plastic explosives um, through the airport onto a plane, A, and then B, statistically, that that cooler gets stolen and then ends up on the side of the road. Did their Patsy get wise and, and just get rid of it? That's a hard call uh, because uh, was there a Patsy? And also, uh, if they want to get it through the airport, they have no problem doing so because of the police. So I think it was just a setup and probably the suspect will be a member of the Tea Party. What else? Oh, I get it. They'll claim that a Tea Party or stole the government's bombs. That, yeah, because I mean, clearly they don't, you know, real explosives in a thing and then they get stolen and then left on the side of the road. It's just the reason I actuary in and, and the prime thing that pops up is, is, you know how they say, oh, you're part of a drill, they blow you up on a train, it turns out there's a drill of it happening, the exact thing. Or 9-11, they think they're part of a drill to see if they alert air marshals that are in test. And we know that's what happened there, at least how they set up the, the uh, decoys. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's what I see here is that somebody got wise and something happened. And, you know, when they have exercises, they don't use live or uh, C4 or something like that. I mean, they, they use dummies. Yeah, well, or, or, or they have something that looks like a bomb and put a little residue on it to test the sniffers. You, you don't have a big keg of plastic explosives. I mean, these people make me want to throw up. I mean, that, the, the things that they do are so dumb. Uh, you know, it's not only the local law enforcement, but the federal government as well. Uh, it, 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 the stories that come up with are just mind-blowing. It's dumb. It's just another effort, to, I think, to make people think that there's some real terrorists out there who might have intercepted what the government was doing or what the police were doing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of angles to this. It's hard. Yeah, the police could have stopped the feds. That's another point. But then the cops, that's what I said earlier, don't want to get busted for doing the right thing, so they just stick it on the side of the road. And we've got this um, great work of uh, David Dees up there. Um
He, he puts out fake magazine covers occasionally to illustrate the absurdity of this insane world. And on the cover of the magazine, this is on the right-hand bottom corner of Infowars.com if you want to go look at it, it's Sheeple Magazine, Land of the Fee, Home of the Slave. And it's the August-September uh, 2011 edition, the beautiful Sheeple, fat, poor, and loving it. Uh, it goes on to say 9-11, 10 years of not asking questions. Uh, other part of the issue, Japan, a little radiation can't hurt. Libya slaughtered, NATO drops bombs of peace. And then above that, the big ma magazine cover uh, is a uh, frog in a boiling uh, pot with blue flame under it saying, slowly increasing the heat, don't worry, he won't jump out until it's too late. Under that, it then says, police state, 400 taser deaths in the U.S., chemtrails, fluoride, MSG, GMOs, mandatory toxic vaccines for babies. Uh, that is a really good magazine. And that's actually how it should read. Uh, going back to Bob <laughs> Chapman. Hey, Bob, is that a good deal? And I want your honest view on this. I know we have another special. Uh, you get a Frank at, I forget, it's a very low price. Check today's price. And then you get a free subscription to the International Forecaster for a year. That's also one of the other specials at 800-686-237. But how good of a deal is two silver dollars for 88 bucks with shipping, a book, and a DVD on top? It's probably underpriced by 50%. But we're bad. In other words, if you went and bought it, you'd pay twice as much. But we're still bad, though, because we told folks buy silver at $5, uh, and now it's, uh, where is silver right now? Oh, it's forty one forty four off a dollar nine, and gold's off five forty right now. And it's been shooting up and down as, it, uh, as the stuff ping-pongs. So I don't know, folks. Well, that's the government trying to knock it down, and, and the physical buyers from China and India and, and other countries, they're, they're in there buying what they think is very cheap gold and silver. Well, remember, gold, until they devalued their currency or attempted to this week, gold's gotten cheaper in Switzerland in the last five years. I mean, it's, it's, it's the dollar devaluation that's causing this, correct? Gold isn't really going up, is it, Bob? Uh, you might put it that way, yes, but the, the Switzerland has kept even but there's been some years out of the last 11 that they have fallen behind uh the price of gold if you take the nine major currencies and each year you compare them with the prices of gold or silver then you'll find that both gold and silver are up more than 20 percent each year against those nine currencies but within that nine currency structure, the Swiss, Swiss franc has done the best. But I don't know about the future. You know, they're pegging the thing at 120, which means it can't go any higher. So I would think that people who might have gone since they made that fix, so to speak, and in the future, they probably would have been buying gold instead. But my point is, I get emails saying, well, gold's, you know, almost $1,900. Uh, you know, it's too late to get it. Well, w w when it was 265 was it too late? When it was 400 was it too late? When it was 800 1000 1200 1500 1600 1700 1800 1900 I mean, when? I mean, when it's 3000 will it be too late to get it? Because they're devaluing the dollar. People are like, why is it so much? And I'm like, the dollar is being devalued. And because they're signaling they're going to devalue it further, people are trying to get a hedge. And now it's not even becoming a hedge. It's becoming, I mean, I was even listening to Bloomberg, and they had all these top financial experts who usually are busy lying all day. And they were, they were talking about 5,000, 3,000. They were debating, will it be 5,000 in a year or 3,000? Look, I don't know. I'll be happy if gold's 1,500 bucks in a year. I don't buy it as an investment. I buy it as a backup because the currencies cannot be trusted. But my gut tells me and history tells me, you know, next year sometime we're going to be looking at 2,500. Now, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, what well, they're saying 2,500 this year, whatever. The point is, is I've never sold a stinking piece of silver or gold I've bought, Bob, and gold could go up to 10,000 tomorrow. I'm not selling it because I'm not going to cash the gold in for more fiat garbage. When this all planes out and something new comes out and it starts over, I know my gold is going to save my investment versus losing it in 
hyperinflation. So I know I'm better off. Is it perfect? No. But we've been totally correct. And it's been the smart move, the only move. And then we get attacked and criticized. It's like saying, this guy told me uh, to, you know, to buy stock in Ford Motor Company, you know, for two cents a, a share. And it went up to 20 bucks a share a year later. It's a bad deal. This guy told me to, you know, buy stock in Apple, uh, you know, before it went up 400%. I hate him. This guy, this guy told me not to walk in front of a train. He's, he's scum. I mean, is it just that some people are mad, Bob, that they didn't get into gold and silver? And so they've still, I mean, because I've had family. I've told you the story. Extended family laugh at me that I'm right about gold. It's like, ha -ha, you've, you've been, you've had five, six, seven, eight fold increase when everybody else hasn't. You're crazy. And I'm like, okay, okay are, 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 are you mentally ill? I don't even say that. I just go, yes. Um, how, how are those mashed potatoes? You know, it's, oh, yes, yes. I'm crazy. Yes. I mean, what is this? Well, it tells you a lot about people, and uh, if they don't think it can happen and they don't act on it, then they don't talk about it. But if it goes up and you did it and you said it was going up, they will attack you because you've been right. It's just like the guy who is a great star in whatever field he's in, and everybody wants to knock him down. It's part of human nature. I mean, I was one of the top stockbrokers in the world. I mean, I never, it was endless, the attacks. And I still get them as a writer. And I just ignore them. I get, I get, too, I get too busy, a schedule, and too much to do that's positive to listen to that garbage. Yeah, and it's not the criticism I mind, Bob. It's that I feel sorry for them. But I guess losers like to try to pull other people down. I just don't get it. When I see somebody successful and they've done it through hard work, I admire them and I, I and I feel good that humanity's doing well. You know, I think more and more, and I want your view that we're going to calls on this, Bob, that, that you can break people into 50 different groups if you want, or a thousand or five different groups. But at the end of the day, there's two groups. There's destructive people that hate other humans and don't like others being successful, whether they're successful or not successful. They just don't like it. And then there's people that like goodness and, and success and, and are optimistic and, and, and believe we can succeed and like seeing other people do good. Uh, because I remember being a kid and being shocked that people would be jealous that I was really good looking when I was younger. Or they would get really jealous when I came into a restaurant with a beautiful woman. And, and I just, I don't understand that. You know, people versus folks that like you because you're good looking or smart or whatever. And, and, and then there's, but there's others who hate you. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yes. I've experienced it. I've known people for 20 or 30 years. And all of a sudden they become insanely jealous of me. And it's very disheartening because, you know, fundamentally you like the people, but people change because they say what you just said. Um, how can he be so successful? How can he be right all the time? How can he be so good looking? And so just like you've uh, stated here, and, but that doesn't make up much of the population, I don't think. I think maybe at the very outset, outside, it might be 15%. I agree, Most but people, the media is trying to make people artificially like that. Could be. Could very well be. Any, any sort of discontent is what they like. Mm. Anything. I mean, look at divorces. And then you have children. I mean, I coached for 35 years. Almost every team I had of 12 kids, eight didn't have one parent or the other. And they do and that to their children. For a long time. And I've been studying but government it. likes that because it makes the people dependent on government not on mom or dad. Yeah, and they sell it. I've been studying, and I'm not blaming women, but if you look at it, women are sold now that it's really cool to get divorced, and they're the boss, and, they're sh and, they, and they rationalize when children are four to three times, depending on which actuary, likely to end up on drugs, in prison, ruined lives if they're divorced. And, and, and it's like, and, 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 and some men are bad and leave too, but uh, I mean, do you agree with my statement that more and more women just think it's really cool to get a divorce? Uh, yes, I do. And, and there's another factor here. 
I heard from a lot of young men, uh, young men or men under 50, uh, especially in their 30s that haven't been married. Uh, they'll run into someone who hasn't been married either, and they'll get married and they'll have a couple of children, and the wife will say, um, I, I don't think I want to live with you anymore. And then what happens, you find out that the woman, from the time she was perhaps 16 until she was 30, only had lesbian relationships. There's a lot of that going on. And they're just using you to have the kid and then pay them child support. You notice women don't have to pay it in most cases. They, they sit there, they get your kids, they, and, and they like it, and they love it. And the kids are all screwed up, and society's collapsing, but they don't care because the women shows and the TV tell them they're winning. And they love it. Just Oh, it's, it's so scientific. Now, Hitler said first... Well, I've seen it firsthand, and uh, it's, it, you know, on the other side of the coin, the life of the male involved gets all messed up as well. And, and uh, usually he doesn't want to get married again because of the dreadful experience that he had. You know, you come home, and uh, there's your wife and her girlfriend in the kiss kitchen, and they're kissing. And they say, hey, your money's mine, pal. Get out of here. By the way, we're going to shoot right. the kids up with, and then the women even like it when the kids get an illness from the vaccine. Then they get to take them and hook them all up with the wires and get attention when the kid dies. Just a real sick society. You said it. And it's not only in America, it's in other places as well. Well, Hitler That's said. Why society's so volatile today. That's why you see the demonstrations and the rioting throughout the world. Yes, they're frustrated. But the cohesion of society, all societies, is not what it was, say, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, which is nearby, uh, because the government has destroyed deliberately the family unit. Unbelievable. Let's take some calls. Uh, Yah in Colorado, you're a champion holder there. You're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my name is Yesar. Okay, I'm sorry. They only had the, uh, they had it broken in two. Oh, so go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, I wanted to make two comments and ask you a question. My first comment was about that woman caller. You shouldn't have paid her any mind. She didn't have any idea what she was talking about. She said she listened to you for six years, but obviously she hasn't been. And if even if she did disagree with you, I disagree with you, but on 5% of what you say, but that's not the uh, major deal. It's about the big things we agree on. We should agree on that they're trying to kill us. Yes. And that should be the biggest point of it all. Yeah, why do we make it about Alex Jones or uh, Yasab or Bob Chapman? This is about the globalists are attacking everybody. They don't care if you're Christian, Muslim, atheist. The, the New World Order is jacking with the food and the water of everybody. They're playing God, and we're all fighting with each other. Exactly. Yeah, that's my whole point. We're fighting. That's how they get us. We we have a disagreement on one little thing, and then we're fighting with it. And then I don't like you, and I don't like you for this reason. But they're still doing the same thing. They're killing us. And people need to understand that. My second point is, all, like I said, 9-11, and they're killing us in any kind of way and taking our freedom away. And these Christians don't understand what they have. They think they have to stand down because they think they're going to get raptured. But they don't realize in history, in all, for 1,800 years, most theologians and people that believe in the scriptures, they knew that the rapture was going to happen at the end when all the tribulation was over. A five-year-old could read that. It says when the angel comes and grabs the devil and puts him in the pit, that's when the dead in Christ rise. A, a five-year-old could understand that. You're absolutely right. Exactly. And uh, it was a British evangelist, uh, John Nelson Darby, that started that in the uh, 1900s. Yep. So people, uh, they need to search research and do their history. And another question, my question All right, I'll, is... I want you to finish. This is a great call. We'll do five minutes overdrive with Bob so we can get to Don, Sheldon, Otter, Robert. We'll get to everybody, but quickly finish. Caller, when we come back, we'll get Bob yeah, Chapman. Let's a caller in Colorado. I don't want to mispronounce your name. You said Yasab. Uh, is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. 
Okay, you saw it. You saw it because they had it. Uh, you, YA, okay. a YA, a Y A H S L B. But but uh, go, go ahead and finish your point. Okay, let me just finish about the Christians. If, if they think they or the state Christians, if they think they're going to make it to heaven, they're not standing up for what's right and what's righteous. They're sadly mistaken. Okay, going back to the question, I have a question there. Do you know anything about the King Alfred plan? King Alfred plan, Chapman. Don't know. Never heard it. It rings a bell with me, but I can't remember what it is. Go ahead, caller. Tell us what it is. It's it's basically about uh, how they're going around the world and killing up all the the colored people. But then they revised it in the Rex 84 about how they're going to do in America with all the black people. They put the Hispanics on it, too. No, no, I was aware of the King Alfred plan. Yeah, no, no, it's admitted. The King Alfred plan was a uh, uh, fictional CIA-led scheme supporting an international effort to eliminate people of African descent, specifically it defined how to deal with the threat of black uprising in the United States. Uh, the plan first appeared in John A. Williams' novel, The Man Who Cried, I Am, a fictionalized account. But again, it goes into the fact that it was probably something mirroring real plans like Rex 84. Uh, Bob, any comments? No, uh, now that you speak of it, I've heard of the plan, but I really don't know much about it. All right, sir, I got to jump and get to a few other people. Good to hear from you. Okay, let's, uh, oh, I just lost my phone list. I tell you, this computerized phone system drives me insane. John, who's up next there? Don in Michigan, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Don. Is that Don, Is that Don in Michigan? Yep, that's you, buddy. Oh, okay, it broke up. I'm sorry. Hey, real quick, I know you're running short on time. Um, and I don't mean to keep addressing Nina, but I want to let her know that uh, a couple people that scare me more than her virgin husband or, or her people or whatever she wants to call them is John McCain and Joe Lieberman. Uh, any persons, including a U.S. Uh, citizen, can be detained for the duration of a conflict, the Enemy Belligerent Act. So I would be nor I would be the hair would stand up on my neck more running into John McCain at 7-Eleven than it would her husband. Well, so that's, that's right. They, they try to scare us with the Muslims and then try to put in these laws to just have us disappear into a dungeon. And the government says they can do that. Obama says that. Right. And then I'm trying to be really quick because I know you're running out of time. But another point I wanted to make was, do you want a pretty doctor to give surgery to your three-year-old or do you want somebody with an excellent record? And my point there is, uh, do you want somebody with pretty hair like Romney or or Perry, or do you want Ron Paul with a perfect record? I'm going to pick Ron Paul with a perfect record to take care of my kid. Exactly. I want the specialist who has the best record of success, not the little cutesy doctor. That's what you check for, and, and that's a, I'm going to steal that analogy. Did uh, did you come up with that? Because that is very effective to say, hey, if you're going to a doctor, it isn't about looks. It's about their record, and Ron Paul's got a perfect record. Now, if I'm scared to death that my kid might be in danger, I'm going to go look at their, their histories. I'm going to look at the best doctor. I'm going to say, I, I don't care if you look like an, an, an ogre. <laughs> um, but one last thing, because I'm trying to be really quick because I know you're so short. Another idea for getting out the information. One thing I do, I've getting, given out about 1,000 DVDs. And now that I've given them out to a lot of people I know, what I do is I just get the paper sleeves. They're cheap. Write the name of the DVD, write Infowars.com. And on the paper sleeve, write, uh, Fate Had You Find It. Curiosity will have you watch it. Leave it like on a newspaper box, a park bench. Bench outside of a store. You're an awesome caller. I'm out of time for the official transmission. See you back Sunday, 4 to 6. We're going to come back for five minutes and finish up on Internet only. Final See you tomorrow. Calls. Appreciate everybody holding. Sheldon in Wisconsin. You're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Jones. I have a quick question for you. Besides the Orly Tates and the Larry Sinclairs, is there anybody out here who has tried to file a lawsuit for impeachment for Mr. Sortoro? And then um, yeah, one question for Mr. Chapman. Sure. Phil Berg has tried, and the courts basically throw it all out. And I tell you, I, I'm just going to tell you, his uncle, that's the illegal alien and all that, looks nothing like him. His dad looks nothing like him. And the intel I've got from Wayne Madsen, who, again, is a big liberal. He is, he's not bashing Obama because he, you know, he, he doesn't like him because he's black or whatever, is that uh, he's uh, basically, uh, his dad is a... Is a uh, uh, you know, part Hispanic, part black guy from Cuba. Uh, but I mean, you can just look at it. His dad is not his dad. 
and even the state and after I heard this years later the State Department came out and, and they had to release the documents that at major universities his dad got kicked out for getting a bunch of women pregnant and then it was fake and then he had fake marriages with women that had other husbands and uh, I'm sorry uh, uh, your question for Bob Chapman uh, yeah well but just to piggyback on what you were saying, Mr. Sortoro just got caught, uh, I believe, a few weeks ago filing um, income taxes with an invalid Social Security number. I mean, for that and along with the murder of Donald Young, is there anybody who have any testicles to go to the Supreme Court like Orly Pace and Mr. Sinclair to file impeachment hearings on Mr. Sortoro? Now, uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, Iran and Syria. Is there anything movement going on with World War Three? I know that Gaddafi is trying to pay off something with his bow that he has um, stored. I just want to know if uh, either uh, Mr. Jones, if you can finish up on my first question. Sure, sure, you. sure. Uh, let's uh, get get Bob's take on that, Bob. Well, I don't have anything further than what everybody else has, and uh, I think that they would like to have a war in the Middle East on their timetable. And uh, what they went after Gaddafi for was everything that they had in the country there, and uh, which was extensive. And what's going to happen to him, I don't know. Well, we know it's bad news. Good to hear from you, Sheldon. Great points. Uh, Otter in Mass, last caller, sorry to the others, Jared and Aaron and others. Uh, go ahead, Otter. Can you hear me? Yes. How, 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 how are the dams going? <laughs> yes, quickly, I know. Um, three quick things. Blessings, question, and quote. Um, your family, you, your friends, your circle, your crew, guest contributors, Ron Paul, of course, all in the hearts of many of us. And this comes from First Nation. I want to throw in Russell Means in there as well. You've spoken of him recently. Yeah, we've been trying but to get him on really, really hard. He's, you know, he's in bad shape. Folks need to pray with him. Esophageal cancer, it's spread all over his body. Yeah, I know. I've been watching the sites. Uh, the question, you've heard, I've heard you a number of times say, nine states, now 12, with the arrests of people video, video and taping um, police in public. Uh, is Massachusetts one of them? Because I've never heard the list. Uh, I've seen the list and I can't remember. I know it's like Maryland, Illinois. Connecticut, I think it may be Mass. Uh, okay. Got an article here from the, the Vineyard Gazette from yesterday, the 8th of September. Uh, Tisbury police officer led Caleb Bacon away in handcuffs. 25-year-old, no, no, 20-year-old, I'm sorry, for uh, unlawful wiretapping. They do have a... Uh, Com, uh, companion article, First Amendment to protect uh, wiretapping, and of course it talks what we talked about the Circuit Court of Appeals. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, uh, Pennsylvania is is one of them too. We're out of time, sir. But uh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you this Sunday, or I'll see you tonight at seven. Uh, but but Bob Chapman, in closing, what do you think of the police trying to put a guy in jail for life for filming him? Well, I think it it is another one of these instances where they continue to harass the public to bring them into line and to make them do the things that they want to do. That's what that's all about, control. Yes, sir. God bless you, Bob. We'll see you next Friday, Lord willing.